Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, you're going to see how this BPSK spread spectrum beacon works. We are going to use JavaScript to demodulate its signal and the hardware front end is this Tektronix real-time spectrum analyzer. I binded the Tektronix DLL in Node.js so we can access the spectrum analyzer API through JavaScript. The schematics of this beacon, all my simulation and JavaScript files are available on Patreon. You can support the channel and be part of the Allotronix family being a patron. Let's go! This plot here is showing the output of the early and late correlators and here you have the despreaded constellation diagram that is being used to decode the data. We can see that the signal changes when I play around with the transmitter and if I turn off the transmitter it goes back to acquisition mode because it lost the code sequence. With the transmitter turned off, the constellation collapses to noise because now all signals received by the antenna are spread by the software defined ratio correlation. If I turn on the transmitter, we're going to see the correlation going up and the receiver switch into tracking mode. Let's see. Let's go. Receiver switch to tracking mode. Now we are waiting for a frame sync. We already have data. We are waiting for a frame sync to lock in the message, okay? Frame sync now is locked and you can see also that the receiver needs to detect if the phase of the BPSK constellation is negative or positive as we have phase ambiguity here on the constellation. A positive constellation or a swap constellation is allowed because we don't know the phase of the transmitter. We can only detect the phase change. This is why we need to search for two frame syncs, the normal frame sync and also the inverted frame sync. When we find one of the frame syncs, we know that we have phase negative or positive and we can start decoding the bit string. And here the real-time spectrum analyzer that is streaming the downconverted IQ data directly to USB where I binded the Tektronix DLL in Node.js. Well guys, when I started this quick project here, my idea was to create the simplest circuit possible that could transmit a BPSK signal with spread spectrum. The circuit I created is this one here. We start with a 16 MHz oscillator. So this is a crystal oscillator that is generating the main clock of the system, 16 MHz in this case here. You can use other crystals to accomplish other output frequencies. The 16 MHz signal is fed to a balanced multiplier that multiplies this base frequency here. And we can choose the harmonics tuning the multiplier to multiply the signal to 64, 8, 9, 6 or 112 MHz. All these values are harmonics of 16 MHz. And to simplify the circuit, I had this breakthrough idea here of using a balanced multiplier where the multiplier already outputs two different phases here, in this case for BPSK, 0 degrees and 100 degrees. So if the multiplier already outputs two phases, we can use two switches here, two diodes, to choose what phase we are going to transmit. The signal is amplified and goes to the antenna. The two diodes are used as radio frequency switches, controlled by this AVR 80 Mega 88. The microcontroller have in its memory the 63 bits spreading code, a table and it encodes the data frame with the spreading sequence inside in software. So it needs only to generate two signals here to turn on and turn off the two diodes choosing which phase will be outputted to the antenna. I'm calling this signal here data plus and this one here data minus. Negative and positive data. When the bottom diode is switched on we have one phase when the upper diode is switched on, we have the other phase. This inductor here is used to better match the antenna to the output of the amplifier because I wanted to have a pretty small antenna. So with the series inductor, I use the VNA to better match the antenna. This is the basic circuit, guys. The full diagram is available on Patreon. Link in the description. You can support the channel being part of the family electronics being a patron. So guys, we start with a common oscillator here, an inverter gate oscillator. We have the crystal here and the phasing capacitors and this very fast square wave this is important guys here in this node here we have a very fast square wave that is rich in harmonics so we fed this square wave in a resonant tank the resonant part of the tank is this capacitor here this variable capacitor and this first inductor here and the signal needs to be fed through a very small capacitor to isolate the tank and also a series resistor to prevent nasty oscillations in much higher harmonics. This is important. This fed circuit here needs to be a bit lossy to prevent 
high order oscillation. And this is the heart of the transmitter. It's a frequency multiplier and modulator. We have two inductors here that are coupled to the primary inductor through air. Couple factor here is something like 0.22. And you can see that the ground is connected in the middle of the two inductors. So now this is a balanced topology. We are getting a single-ended signal here and generating a balanced signal here. The secondary is also tuned. We need to adjust these two capacitors to select the harmonic. And now we can get part of the RF signal and inject in the two diode switches. The switches are controlled by the data minus and data plus that comes from the microcontroller. Let's imagine that you have zero here, plus five volts here. The upper diode will conduct through this path here. And now this diode here will have a very small, small signal series resistance. Now the RF signal can pass through the diode. It is terminated at this 100 ohm resistor. This is important. This 100 ohm resistor here creates a termination to the tank, to the controlling voltage, and also to prevent oscillation of the first amplifier here. The input of this first amplifier here needs to be at a very low impedance to prevent oscillation. Now the RF signal, part of the RF signal will of course be lost in the resistor and part will excite the input of the first amplifier here. First stage here has a very low feedback resistance to control its gain, preventing nasty oscillations. After we can amplify the signal more and connect to the antenna. Here we have the inductor and, uh, and also in the output of each amplifier we have a resistor to better match the antenna. Each resistor here is 150 ohms, so we get a total of 50 ohm feeding the antenna here. Of course guys, these logic gates are generating square waves and the only filtering we have here is the antenna. The bandpass response of the antenna is the only filtering that we have in the output. So this cannot be used as a commercial beacon because the output spectrum is not clean enough, but for experimentation it works really well. And guys, actually this is a challenge for you. Design a bandpass filter at the output to prevent all the harmonics to be transmitted in the spectrum. And of course guys, we need to take a sample of the oscillator pass through a low pass filter to isolate a little the RF going back to the microcontroller and we fed the clock of the microcontroller here. So the microcontroller is also clocked by the same crystal of the transmitter. So guys, here we have the microcontroller, the logic gate, the crystal and the frequency multiplier and modulator diodes here. We can see that the oscillator feds the microcontroller serving as the microcontroller clock and it also excites the middle coil, the primary of the frequency multiplier, tuned by this tuning capacitor here. At each side of the primary we have two coils tuned in a balanced fashion with this tuning capacitor here, where the signals are taken and applied to the two modulating diodes, fed in the first RF amplifier here and being controlled by these two controlling lines here from the microcontroller. We have the series resistors to bias the diodes and also here we have a place for two capacitors. If we want to make pulse shaping, we can place two capacitors here. Control the pulse of the waveforms that switch on and off the diodes. Here we have the feedback resistor of the first amplifier, a chain of two amplifiers that fed the three parallel amplifiers of the output. Each amplifier has a 105th resistor, creating a 5th ohm output here that is matched to the antenna. This part here is not a real inductor, it is a choke, so it's very lossy, it's not good for this application, but it was what I had here in the lab. Here we have a 5 volt regulator, the header for programming the chip, and the construction of this prototype uses matches Widmer techniques using holes, drilled holes, and copper tape on the bottom to create very strong low inductance vias. So here we can see a via. I really love this construction technique, guys. It's so easy, so easy to drill, so good to solder, and also for microwaves and RF, perfect via because it, it has very low inductance. Now that we understand how this spread spectrum beacon works, we can proceed to demodulate its signal using our JavaScript software defined radio. So, guys, let's take an overview of the software defined radio that I created to demodulate the signal of the beacon. First thing I did was the bindings for the RSA. So what we need to do here guys, we need to load the DLL of Tektronix. This is the Tektronix DLL and we also need to play a bit with the Windows kernel here to allow the dynamic loading of the Tektronix library. And here we define the bindings of 
the Tektronix API. So I got the documentation of the API and I created all the bindings needed here. So we have bindings to connect to a device, to search for devices. This is the device I'm talking about. We have functions to configure the center frequency, the reference level, because it is a real-time spectrum analyzer. So we have the center frequency, also real-time bandwidth needs to be configured. And here we have the functions to acquire IQ blocks of data. And here we have IQ stream where the API, where the Tektronix API streams for the application the IQ data in real time so we can demodulate the signal as we saw in the beginning of the video. I started the project doing simulations and programming the software defined radio using blocks of data and after I got the system working I switched to the IQ string system of Tektronix. Here we are making the bindings to the DLL and we also need to make some boilerplate code here we need to create, me we need to allocate memory, you need to copy data, copy the IQ block data from the Tektronix API. We need to have the functions to configure the spectrum analyzer. Here you can see one function where I need to allocate two doubles, I need to communicate with the API through the binding, and you need to dereference the data to get the values returned by the functions. So here I needed to create a lot of boilerplate code to be able to read the data. Here are the status bits. You can see here we have ADC over range. We have flags indicating that the buffers of the Tektronix Spectrum Analyzer are overflowing and a lot of other things. The next step on this project, guys, was to create all the blocks, all the components of a software defined radio that we need to create this software here. So I created an ADC, an automatic gain controller. This is the class of the automatic gain controller. Here we have a delay line. Here we have the integrators and dumps. Remember, take a look on the video. Link is in the description where I explain how the spread spectrum topology works. You're gonna remember that I explained about the integration and dump procedure. We have the linear feedback shift registers to create the sequences. So here we can, you can see we have a register. We've shifted the data. Here we need to calculate the feedback taps in a clever way here in JavaScript. We have the NCOs. Take a look at these guys. The NCO is actually a phase accumulator, remember? So we have the phase accumulator. We need to up update the phase with the controlling voltage or the controlling signal. And here we need to simulate the overflow because we are using floats here in, the ja in JavaScript. And here you have functions to return the cosine and sine terms. We also have an NCO enable that is pretty similar to the NCO. We can see it here. Here we have the NCO enable and the NCO. The NCO enable is an NCO, but instead of generating cosine and sine signals, it generates an output enable signal. More like a clock divider. More like a clock divider. And I use this enable signal here to control the linear feedback shift registers to advance the code sequence to the next code. This is why we need the NCO enable. We have a PI controller here, common PI controller. The error multiplied by the proportional constant and the integrator multiplied by the integral constant. Uh, I don't have here any integration protection here, but it works. And okay, guys, now we can go to the code of the actually SDR, where we're going to program the SDR functions of this spread spectrum receiver. Uh, indeed. Take a look here. We have some parameters. Ship height, the thresholds for acquisition, thresholds for, fa for fail of tracking. We have the main IQ AGC, the six integrators and dumpers. We have two linear feedback shift registers, one for tracking, where, where we create the early and late signals, and one is the punctual code or the code that is correctly aligned. We have NCO for tracking, NCO for puncturing code. We have a loop for tracking, a controller. We have the costas loop NCO here, compensating for carrier, recovering the carrier, we have a PI controller for the Costas loop. We have more configurations here, and we also have a bit synchronizer that needs a, another NCO and a PI controller. As I explained in this video, click here up in the balloon about clock recovery. Here we calculate the bits of the frame sync word. We have a lot more things here. We have the a class that I created to analyze the data. So we created a class called CSV scope that output the signals in a CSV file so I can analyze in Octave. Here we start to connect to the RSA API. We configure the, the spectrum analyzer. 
we check if it's going well here and here we have the data so we have this pull, pulling function here that is pulling the api to get new blocks of data we need to check if the data is valid it, if we have new data and here we start the process of the of the modulation guys first thing we decode the two iq signals of the spectrum analyzer the i and q we fed the i and q data to the game to automatic game controller so we need to control the gain of the signal and update the agc so it can update the gain now we make the costas loop signal rotation in this topology here I, i'm making the signal rotation the carrier recovery compensation i'm doing in the beginning of the process in, in the video where i explained the topology i place the costas loop in the end of the topology i feed back the signal back to the input where we have the iq rotation we need to update the linear feedback shift registers so it's gen so it's advancing in time creating new code creating the next code sequence we integrate the signals here you can see that we are, we are modulating mixing with the late the the early and here we are mixing with the punctual code we calculate the costas loop error for a bpsk constellation and we update the costas loop code the costas loop controller and here we have the dumps guys remember that we have switches that are dumping the output of the integrators we need to dump the output so we dump i and q and we dump iq late and early here we calculate the energy and here we need to check if we are in acquisition mode and the energy is over the acquisition threshold we need to switch to tracking mode else we need to advance the code to make a new integration to see if the correlation is, is high and we keep repeating it until we find the correct code phase and when we are in tracking mode things are a bit more complicated we update the tracking loop with the error of the late and early correlators here we have only a logic to check if we are below the fail threshold we have a we have a fail counter so we can have an, an hysteresis of the correlation value and if you got below the fail threshold we need to reset the radio go to acquisition mode again to start a new acquisition cycle to see if we can lock to the code sequence again here you have the clock recovery code guys pretty much exactly equal to the code uh, to the system i explained in the clock recovery video link is in the description also we need to calculate the edge so the edge here is only a, a derivation if the edge is over the threshold we calculate the error of the bit sync nco and we update the bit sync loop and here when we have an overflow of the bit sync nco we know that we need to sample the data to detect if you have a bit one or a bit zero so this is doing bit sync recovery and here we are actually sampling the data of the i component here you can see that we are only sampling the i component because for a bpsk signal the data is on the i arm of the costas loop and if it is positive we have a one here is not a one from the data perspective it's only an internal one because we don't know yet the phase of the bpsk this one can be a zero and this zero can be a one because the bpsk constellation can be swapped but here we need to define that over positive values are one and negative values are zero so guys here we need to search for the frame sync word we have 24 bits of frame sync but the data can be reversed if the constellation is also if the constellation is reversed so we need to search for the reversed bit string of the frame sync and also for the normal frame sync okay you can see here that we are searching for the reversed and here we are searching for the normal if we detect the correct bit we advance to detect the next bit and we need to advance 24 times to know that we have find the frame sync in the bit string if it doesn't match we need to reset the counter and start counting again so if one of the counters reach 24 bits we know that we find it the frame sync word and now we know if the phase is negative or positive 
So I need to register this data and start decoding the data. And here is actually the decoding process, guys. Okay? So look at this. The next payload byte is appended by the new bit or the new bit reversed if we have negative phase. So if we have positive phase, we only append the new bit. If we have negative phase, we need to append the reversal of the, the new bit. If the byte counter, if the bit counter reaches 8, we know we now have a new byte. And now we can output the byte in the console as an ASCII string character, uh, as an ASCII character in the console of the system. If we encounter, if the new byte is a zero, a new termination, or the payload frame is higher than the maximum number of characters, we know that we need to reset frame detector and start a new detection of a new frame sync to receive new data. And here we are saving some signals to analyze in Octave. And this is the software defined radio, guys. If you want to have access to all my simulation files for this code here, you can become a patron. All the files are available on Patreon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel. Consider being a patron of the channel. The link is in the description of the video. Give a thumbs up, send to your friends, leave a comment, and I see you in the next video of All Electronics.